Tectonic uplift is the geologic uplift of Earth's surface that is attributed to plate tectonics. While isostatic response is important, an increase in the mean elevation of a region can only occur in response to tectonic processes of crustal thickening, such as mountain building events, changes in the density distribution of the crust and underlying mantle, and flexural support due to the bending of rigid lithosphere. Tectonic uplift results in denudation, processes that wear away the Earth's surface by raising buried rocks closer to the surface. This process can redistribute large loads from an elevated region to a topographically lower area as well, thus promoting an isostatic response in the region of denudation, which can cause local bedrock uplift. The timing, magnitude, and rate of denudation can be estimated by geologists using pressure. Temperature studies. Crustal thickening has an upward component of motion and often occurs when continental crust is thrust onto continental crust, basically nappies, thrust sheets. From each plate collide and begin to stack one on top of the other. Evidence of this process can be seen in preserved ophiolitic nappies preserved in the Himalayas and in rocks with an inverted metamorphic gradient. The preserved inverted metamorphic gradient indicates that nappies were actually stacked on top of each other so quickly that hot rocks did not have time to equilibrate before being thrust on top of cool rock. The process of nappo stacking can only continue for so long as gravity will eventually disallow further vertical growth. Although the raised surfaces of mountain ranges mainly result from crustal thickening, there are other forces at play that are responsible for the tectonic activity. All tectonic processes are driven by gravitational force when density differences are present. A good example of this would be the large-scale circulation of the Earth's mantle. Lateral density variations near the surface, such as the creation, cooling, and subduction of oceanic plates also drive plate motion. The dynamics of mountain ranges are governed by differences in the gravitational energy of entire columns of the lithosphere. The highest rates of working against gravity are required when the thickness of the crust, not the lithosphere, changes. Lithospheric flexure is the process by which the lithosphere bends under the action of forces such as the weight of a growing orogeny or changes in ice thickness related to glaciation. The lithosphere rests on the asthenosphere, a viscous layer that in geological timescales behaves like a fluid. Thus, when loaded, the lithosphere progressively reaches an isostatic equilibrium. For example, the lithosphere on the oceanward side of an oceanic trench at a subduction zone will curve upwards due to the elastic properties of the Earth's crust. Orogenic uplift is the result of tectonic plate collisions and results in mountain ranges or a more modest uplift over a large region. Perhaps the most extreme form of orogenic uplift is a continental collision. In this process, two continents are sutured together and large mountain ranges are produced. The collision of the Indian and Eurasian plates is a good example of the extent to which orogenic uplift can reach. Heavy thrust faulting of the Indian plate beneath the Eurasian plate and folding are responsible for the suturing together of the two plates. The collision of the Indian and Eurasian plates produced the Himalayas and is also responsible for crustal thickening north into Siberia. The Pamir Mountains, Tian Shan, Altai, Hindu Kush, and other mountain belts are all examples of mountain ranges formed in response to the collision of the Indian with the Eurasian plate. The Ozark Plateau is a broad uplifted area which resulted from the Permian Awachita orogeny to the south in the states of Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. The Colorado Plateau, which includes the Grand Canyon, is the result of broad tectonic uplift followed by river erosion. When mountains rise slowly, either due to orogenic uplift or other processes, a rebound after glaciation, an unusual feature known as a water gap may occur. 
In these, erosion from a stream occurs faster than mountain uplift, resulting in a gorge or valley that runs through a mountain range from low-lying country on one side to similar country on the other. Examples of such water gaps include the Manawatu Gorge in New Zealand and the Cumberland Narrows in Maryland. The removal of mass from a region will be isostatically compensated by crustal rebound. If we take into consideration typical crustal and mantle densities, erosion of an average 100 meters of rock across a broad uniform surface will cause the crust to isostatically rebound about 85 meters and will cause only a 15 meter loss of mean surface elevation. An example of isostatic uplift would be post-glacial rebound following the melting of ice sheets. The Hudson Bay region of Canada, the Great Lakes of Canada and the United States, and Fenosandia are currently undergoing gradual rebound as a result of the melting of ice sheets 10,000 years ago. Crustal thickening, which for example is currently occurring in the Himalayas due to the continental collision between the Indian and the Eurasian plates, can also lead to surface uplift. But due to the isostatic sinking of thickened crust, the magnitude of surface uplift will only be one-sixth of the amount of crustal thickening. Therefore, in most convergent boundaries, isostatic uplift plays a relatively small role and high peak formation can be more attributed to tectonic processes. Direct measures of the elevation change of the land surface can only be used to estimate erosion or bedrock uplift rates when other controls, such as changes in mean surface elevation, volume of eroded material, time scales, and lags of isostatic response variations in crustal density. In a few cases, tectonic uplift can be seen in coral islands. This is evidenced by the presence of various oceanic islands composed entirely of coral, which otherwise appear islands of volcanic origin. Examples of such islands are found in the Pacific, notably the three phosphate islets of Nauru, Makatea, and Banaba, as well as Mare and Lifo in New Caledonia, Tatu Huku in the Marquesas Islands, and Henderson Island in the Pitcairn Islands. The uplift of these islands is the result of the movement of oceanic tectonic plates. Sunken islands or guyats with their coral reefs are the result of crustal subsidence as the oceanic plate carries the islands to deeper or lower oceanic crust area. Measuring Uplift and exhumation can be tricky. Measuring the uplift of a point requires measuring its elevation change. Usually geoscientists are not trying to determine the uplift of a singular point, but rather the uplift over a specified area. Accordingly, the change in elevation of all points on the surface of that area must be measured and the rate of erosion must be zero or minimal. Also, sequences of rocks deposited during that uplift must be preserved. Needless to say, in mountain ranges where elevations are far above sea level, these criteria are not easily met. Paleoclimatic restorations, though, can be valuable. These studies involve inferring changes in climate in an area of interest from changes with time of flora fauna that is known to be sensitive to temperature and rainfall. The magnitude of the exhumation a rock has been subjected to may be inferred from geothermal barometry, measuring previous pressure and temperature history of a rock or assemblage. Knowing the pressure and temperature history of a region can yield an estimate of the ambient geothermal gradient and bounds on the exhumation process. However, geobarometric geothermometric studies do not produce a rate of exhumation or any other information on time. Exhumation rates can be inferred from fission tracks and from radiometric ages as long as the thermal profile can be estimated. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to please like and subscribe. If you have a topic you would like to suggest, leave a comment.